going to show you how to, to make a surge transport bag. It's actually quite simple. There's only about five steps. First, we have to cut the fabric and the PUL, eight and a half by 15. You're gonna surge both of the short ends. You're going to fold it up and iron the edges to seal them, water seal them. Then we're going to surge the sides and then eventually zigzag the tails down and you'll have a finished transport bag, which we will be able to open up the flap and the girls can put their soil pads inside. Okay, in order to make a surge transport bag, you can either use just PUL, which you could get from Joann's, and it comes like this. You can use just PUL that you get from Days for Girls and it comes like this. You can use PUL that looks like this as well. And, or you can use PUL and fabric. And we like the PUL and fabric combination because it makes for a prettier transport bag and it makes it a little more sturdy for the girls to use. So Days for Girls PUL comes like this. This is 10 yards of Days for Girls PUL, it's 60 wide. So what I do is I put it in fourths and I roll it on this print container. And because it has a cap, the edges act like um, little holders for me and I can then cut very easily and it's nice and neat. The PUL for the surge transport bag is 15 by eight and a half. And since this is 60 wide, you can get four 15s in there very easily. So you just cut eight and a half inches along the selvage and then you get four 15 inch pieces from that. It's best if you put all of your PUL pieces shiny side up and then in the same orientation regardless of how you cut them. So the fabric we're going to use is only about 42 inches so we can't get eight and a half in a group of five but we can get what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into 17 inches so we'll get two and then another two and then a fifth one here so i folded it in half and my first cut is at 17 inches then i open it up <clears throat> cut at 15 inches Cut that in half, so it's eight and a half and eight and a half. So now I have four. Again, putting them in the same orientation. And this last one, I cut to 15 inches. So I end up with two inches of waste and this is the perfect size for using as a tag on your bag and cut this to eight and a half okay this is Anne and she helps me assemble the transport bags when we're working on this she puts the right side of the fabric down the shiny side of the PUL up and clips both ends and then it'll be surged on the short ends. She's going to assemble about 10 of these. So I'm just going to surge the short ends. This particular serger works better if I have the fabric up. Some sergers it seems to pull better if the shiny side of the PUL is up. I can't explain why. You can just do them in a chain. together and you clip them apart. So Anne's going to clip them apart and she's going to set them up so that they can be heat sealed at the iron. She puts the surge end up at the top and folds the bottom up to the line and then clips the bottom so that I can take them to the iron and heat seal the sides. So this is the Days for Girls 
ironing template to seal the sides of the PUL. You can put it inside like this, make sure that you have everything on there, or you can lay it on top. But either way, the goal is to just seal the edges and not the middle. Putting it on top, we have our iron on steam wool setting. We have found that if you don't use steam, it doesn't seal very well. You can check to make sure that you have a seal by looking inside. Then you can fold the top and it's ready for serging the sides. We're just leaving about an inch between each um, transport bag and we'll be clipping it apart at the end. We're going to do the other side but this time we're going to search from the back to keep the flap down while we search. Okay, I've clipped each bag apart and put them, put them in, the, in a pile, flap side down. So I want to make sure the glue on the opposite side, and then I just put a little glue on and glue the tails down. This is so that they don't, they don't unravel. Um, Georgiana is going to do the next step after this. So Anne has glued down the tails of the serging, and that is simply to keep them in place while I zigzag the sides on the regular sewing machine. I usually, again, start in a little bit and backspace at the end of the tail. Because again, if you don't do that, then you tend to get stuck in the sewing hole. When I get to the opposite end, I backspace at the end of the tail again. And you can chain these together. So the transport bag has, had, has been surged and zigzagged on the ends. It's been heat sealed, so it's waterproof. It'll hold water um, at least five minutes. And what the girls should do is grab their soiled liners by the ends that have been in the pockets of their shield, and they can put them in here to transport them home. They can do you fit up to three in here very easily, holding the ends, pulling the flap back so they don't have to get their fingers dirty. And they could close it up and get the pads home without any trouble. It won't get anything wet. But what they can also do is using one at a time, they can put the soiled pad in there, put a little bit of water, close the flap, squish it around a little bit to sort of pre-rinse it. Then they can open the flap back up, dip the water out, and do it a second time, and then wash it thoroughly. So that's a transport bag with fabric and PUL. Notice if you have fabric, you must serge the short ends. If you use just printed PUL, you can choose to, to serge the short ends if you wish. But you can see by adding them a little bit of extra color, it makes them a little prettier. The same is true of the all white bag. You don't have to serge the short ends, but serging them does add a little bit of decoration to a plain white bag. Uh, you can find all the patterns and dimensions written out for you at the Days for Girls Leadership page. And with two yards of fabric and about two yards of PUL, you can make about 20 transport bags in about an hour.